Trigger warning. This podcast contains descriptions of various abusive situations. Listener discretion is advised. You are listening to the Preacher Boys Podcast, a podcast shedding light on decades of mental, physical, and sexual abuse within the independent fundamental Baptist movement. The testimonies shared on this podcast are told from the personal experience and perspective of the survivors. Not all legal outcomes are known or final. Any suspect is presumed innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. To find more information about the Preacher Boys podcast and upcoming documentary, visit PreacherBoysDoc.com or connect on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter with the handle at PreacherBoysDoc. Now, here is your host, Eric Skwarzynski. Hey everybody, my name is Eric Skorzynski. I host the Preacher Boys podcast. And on today's episode, I want to talk to you about a really powerful documentary that I just came across on HBO Max. I think you can get a free trial and check that out there. Um, but it's called I Am Evidence. To read the description that the film gives itself, it says, I Am Evidence tells the story of four survivors whose rape kits went untested for years following them as they navigate their way through the criminal justice system and learn that so often the system is broken. The film reveals the historic nature of the way we treat the crime of sexual assault in this country and the positive effects that occur when perpetrators are held accountable and survivors are given an opportunity for healing and justice. I Am Evidence has won the Audience Award for Best Documentary Film at both the Provincetown and Traverse City Film Festivals. I always was told, if someone touches you, you tell, you tell, you tell. They did a rape kit on me. I thought they're just going to go out in the week and catch them. And right now, my name is on a box, on a shelf that has never been tested. Really stunning news today about the number of rape cases police have never even tried to solve. I had no clue. People stockpiled rape kits. Rape kits. Untested. Never opened, never tested. I was shocked. There was just racks in an abandoned warehouse with windows open and birds flying around. I could understand one city being negligent, but a nation? When you find out that you have thousands of kits, what do you do? We had to bring justice to these victims. The rape kit backlog is the most shocking demonstration of how we regard these crimes. There were rapists who were not caught. And I can't understand what was so unimportant about me. What were you wearing that particular morning? What they see doesn't look like a real victim. Violence against women is a low priority. All of these kits should be tested. There are rape kits that haven't been processed across this nation. And those kits start getting results. Every day we get another 20 to 30 hits. Over 700 identified serial rapists, just in one city, in one county, in one state. Of course we made mistakes. We didn't realize the potential. You can't change or fix what happened to one person. What you can change is what might happen to someone else. When you get that list of names and it just scrolls down and it doesn't stop, this is something where we can't rest. You don't tell me what I can and can't do. And all it takes is focus, dedication, and commitment. The system should be more accountable. I am evidence that this is not just a kit. This is a person. Yeah, I Am Evidence is a really, really powerful film. Obviously, I was drawn to it once I read the description uh, based on the stuff I'm covering here on the show. Uh, but I was not expecting uh, how powerful this was going to be. Um, I knew the issue of uh, rape kits not being processed or uh, law enforcement moving slowly on cases was a problem. I did not realize that there are literally rape kits that have been sitting on a shelf for decades, some sitting beyond the statute of limitations and just resting in warehouses. Uh, literally, one of the one of the places they show in the documentary uh, is in Detroit. And there were literally 10,000 rape kits that were literally stored in a warehouse outside of any law enforcement facility, just in a separate building, windows left open, birds flying in and out. It was, it was atrocious. And uh, watching through it, it's not something that just happens in one city. Uh, in the documentary, they say, you know, you can understand one city being negligent and fixing that, but a nation being negligent in this way. I want to share you uh, share something with you really quickly. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really fascinating. This is from Mariska Hargitay's uh, actual foundation. They have a program called End the Backlog. And it's basically to get rid of all these tests that are untested, get them tested, get the actual legal process started. Let me show you 
uh, something very, very shocking. And you might want to check it out uh, once you're done taking a look at this video. But this is on endthebacklog.com. I'll go ahead and pull up this, uh, this screen right here. You can actually see uh, where there are like, tests that need to be done, uh, you know, where there's actual reform being proposed. So Wisconsin actually has statewide reform proposed. Uh, you have comprehensive statewide reform enacted in a couple states, limited statewide reform enacted, and then no statewide reform in certain countries or, or certain states, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, if you click through, it's, it's really just gut-wrenching. Uh, California, 13,929 untested kits. Uh, Oregon, uh, zero untested kits, 4,489 in Washington, 523 in Nevada, 6,424. So again, these are women, in case you're unfamiliar with what a rape kit even is, these are women who, after they're raped, go to a uh, emergency room, go to a police station. Uh, they get, it, the pro they show some of the process in the uh, documentary, but they'll literally have uh you know, their hair comb through, uh, they get DNA samples taken from them, they get swabbed, their, their mouth gets swabbed, you know, anywhere where the assault may have happened is swabbed, uh, you know, hairs plucked, uh, pubic hairs comb through. It's a very traumatic experience for someone who's already experienced a traumatic experience. And so uh, women are going through this, some, some of them the same night as this horrific situation happen. They're going in, they're going through that process, which can take, uh, you know, several, you know, several minutes up to an hour, two hours. And then all of that's packaged up, put in a box and set on a shelf and never addressed again. Uh, one woman that was in the documentary, uh, was drugged and raped by, by two men. And she went in, um, that day they went into the police station and the police literally told her, that look, I'm just gonna be honest with you. Nothing's going to happen with this. Your your name's gonna get put on a box. It's gonna put on a shelf. I could take you right now to a place where we have thousands of these that we may never get to. And so it was just a really startling documentary. But I really encourage you to check it out yourself. Uh, one, just to see the incredible work that uh, organizations uh, like Mariska Hargitay's with and the backlog is doing. Uh, and then there's another woman in it that's that's featured pretty prominently. Her name is Kim Worthy. And she's a prosecutor in this area in Detroit and just the incredible work that she's doing and the way she's mobilized people uh, to address this situation is, is huge. And so uh, if you're looking for something to check out, I, I will issue a huge trigger warning. Um, the documentary is very heavy. Obviously it's dealing with rape. Uh, it, it, it covers a, a lot of things like that. I mean, there's actually um, a couple clips that are very hard to watch. Uh, they don't show actual rape, but they do show the events leading up to it. Uh, and there's some pretty heavy descriptions of some of these things. So again, I just want to say, uh, you know, it may be extremely triggering for some, but I do think this is something that's a necessary viewing for uh, a lot of people. I think this is something that needs to be uh, brought to light. A lot of awareness needs to be raised. And I want to look myself into ways that, um, you know, through this podcast, I can shed a little bit of light on it. Uh, but please go check out I Am Evidence. It's on HBO Max right now. Uh, I believe HBO Max is a 30 day free trial. Um, it's worth doing just for that. And uh, definitely check it out and look at supporting the film. I believe you can also purchase it uh, through I Am Evidence, the movie.com. Um, but yeah, definitely check out this film. Uh, it was really powerful to me and I can't endorse it enough. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. So head over there. It's I am evidence. Uh, it's over on HBO max. And, uh, let me know, just go over to the preacher boys official discussion group, uh, hit me up on the, on the social handle handles and, uh, let me know what you think about the film. Uh, really curious to hear the reaction from my audience, but, uh, thank you guys so much for watching and, uh, I uh, hope you guys will check out this film and uh, shed some more light on this important topic. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the Preacher Boys podcast. If you appreciated the content on the show, please leave a review on iTunes and don't forget to connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter with the handle at Preacher Boys Doc. Additional information can always be found on PreacherBoysDoc.com.